Mi dà che è pi? Chante washte na pe chiusa pia. I have discovered a short technique for creating an online and replicable pre and post assessment for our novice level learners. And I want to share that with you. So I'm using formative.com, which does have paid services for schools, but they also allow individual teachers to sign up for free if your school does not have the paid service. So it is something that you could build at least um, at least this assessment on for free. And they did have a statement on their initial website saying that they do not want teachers to ever be forced to pay for this. So I'm not sure how far that goes, but so far it looks good to me. What I'm gaining from using this site is that it allows every student to take the same assessment but their answers are not visible to each other, but they are visible to me. So all I do is give them a link. They don't have to have an account. They don't have to be added into my group or anything. They can um, fill it out as a guest. They just write their name and then they can fill it out. The other big advantage is that you can create both word questions and image questions, which can also be video questions meaning you could just post a video there and then ask them to speak about that video, which is part of our novice level proficiency measurement. So you can customize all of this. I've done almost nothing here. I've just kept it very simple just to show you how I'm doing it. You can customize all of this and then you can write or record questions or put images or videos, all of which is very, very useful. And you can also choose the ways that students respond to you. So in this case, because I'm focusing on their spoken proficiency, I want them to record an audio response. So um, I'm just doing an example here. You would have your question. You have an audio response. Um, and here is how I am choosing settings that are going to allow me to give just a qualitative level of proficiency and not a quantitative score, meaning I do not want to grade this. I only want to determine their level of proficiency from their recorded sample. There's a very important distinction between assessments that we grade, performance assessments, and assessments that are about language proficiency. So this is how I would use this site, which you can use for many, many different things. But this is how I would use this site to create a proficiency level measurement. So the steps I would take, I would design my questions, have them be audio responses. And then I went into each question and I changed it to be worth zero points, um, except for the last one. So I changed it to be worth zero points. So now, and then I also set them all to be required. So every question is required. Um, I will also add instructions at the top of this that say, try your best, answer every question. And there will be a specific instruction that if you do not feel that you know how to answer this, that's fine. Record yourself saying, skip this one. That's a very important part of the design because it is more empowering and it allows the student to be more in control than saying, I don't know. I don't know is negative and embarrassing. So having them say, skip this one is like they are instructing the assessment to conform to their level, it gives me the same information, which is that they didn't know how to answer it. So it works just as well for me. But it also means that every single question is required. So I have checked the required box. I will add instructions up here that say, if you aren't sure what to answer, just record yourself saying, skip this one and move to the next one. No big deal. I record lots of encouraging instructions and and um, encouragement throughout the assessment as well, the measurement as well. And so zero points required. Then at the very last question of all of them, so I finished all the questions, the very last one, I am going to change the settings to say use rubric, but I am going to disable students viewing rubrics. So that's very important. Use the rubric, but disable students viewing the rubric because I don't want the student to fill out the rubric. I'm going to fill out the rubric. So I want the rubric to be there, but
but not to appear for the student. And again, the question is required. The rubric that I have used, I have made this here. I cannot figure out how to send this to other people. So you will have to make it yourself, but it only takes a few minutes of copy pasting. So this is how I did it. Um, I just called it proficiency level. I put these instructions, choose the highest level that accurately describes what was demonstrated in this sample. We can only judge based on what we have evidence of in these recordings. I then pasted in the actual proficiency levels and you can keep going higher. I then in the description, I pasted in the bullet points of how we describe each level here. So these, I just pasted them from my document that has the annotated levels. I pasted them in here. And then I just left the points like this, one point, two points, three points, four points, five points, six points, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not really going to turn out to be points. It's going to turn out to be a level because they are only getting graded on one question, which is the very last question after I've listened to all of their answers. But I've noted here that we are grading them overall. So it's not a grade. It's a it's a it's an evaluation um, of what we saw overall in all of those questions that were required and they were worth zero points. We listened to all of them. And then we choose the highest level that is appropriate for the sample that they've given. And that's the level that we assign them. So that is the rubric that I built on the very last question. I'm going to exit out of it. And then all I have to do once I've completed all of my questions and that that is the setting right there on my very last question. When I go to assign, I, of course, if I have been using this site and I have my students have accounts, I can add them into a class and I can send it out to them that way. But you can use this for anyone. They do not have to be in your class. They do not have to even have an account here. You just simply copy this link or there's a QR code you can use that allows them to access this, uh, this measurement and be able to fill out their answers. I'm just going to log out of my own account really quick and show you how it looks to the student. So I'm logged out now. So this is if I were just coming in as a stranger. I've never seen this site before. Here it is. It does say join, but it's important to know that this does not um, charge them anything. It doesn't log them into anything. And I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm just going to put student example. You, Of course, it would be very important that they write either their real name or a name that you recognize because this is whose work you're going to see. So you need to know who they are. So not to be freaked out by the fact that it says join, just fill in their first name and their last name, click the blue button, and then they come in and they see it. They see it all ready to go. Of course, I can make it much more customized. I click start and then I see the questions. So here's how I record my audio response. That's what it looks like and it will send it in. So look here, this is my very last question. I do not see that rubric as a student. I don't know that there's a rubric there. I do my response and I click submit. And if you look when you say blah, 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 after you finish that and you click submit, it'll just say, you know, zero out of zero, no big deal. Just tell them not to worry about that. It submitted it. And then, um, You'll see here that they can go forward to work in their own account if they want to. And if they don't want to, they can simply X out of the site and be done with it. So that is the easiest way that I have found to build a, an online pre and post assessment for your novice to intermediate low learners who are not quite ready for a spoken fluency interview where it's free for you, it's online, you're gonna have access to all of their recorded multimedia responses, and then you're gonna be able to place them at a proficiency level that will show up in a spreadsheet for you in your teacher account so that you'll be able to easily see your data for your group. So I hope you find this helpful.